happen that you do you being an arcad maybe once in your life. I mean, I think we are arcad maybe when we do one architecture once in a, in w the entire life and then it's finished. Mm -hmm. They were working more to criticize the modern movement or the old architecture or the old design. The international style. Yeah, like that. Me, I, I thought it was not a question to criticize that movement, but it was a question to replace that movement with something that it was really a product. I had the opportunity with Casina and BNB to make, to put in production the series called Up. Yeah, and, and this was, was 1969. In production, yes. And, uh, and that was a real new, new way to see things. And it was important that the company like Casina and BNB put in production that uh, series of objects. But that's become quite iconic. Became. series and now yeah. they just reintroduced it the idea of the chair speaking about the political uh, whatever and what was it speaking about it was uh, the the condition women condition that i always thought that is a very important uh, subject to discuss because half of the population of the world it was were like a slave in certain countries until today, and so I mean I decided to do it with the chair and representing the chair the human uh, female body uh, that is the body of the chair mm. connected with a chain to a ottoman that is like a sphere mm. that in the past was a sphere connected to the leg of a prisoner. It was an innovation. It was a real, a real, in my opinion, the innovation come through three different factors. One is the new language. The second is the use of new material. And the third is the new technology. Mm. And so in that case, the three were there, the new language. So an object like a chair that is talking about political concept or political making a political statement, it was very strong. But in the meantime, it was a chair uh, using new materials that nobody used before without structure, only form. Right, because this comes in a box and you would take it and out it was and it under, expand. Uh, yes, Sorry. compressed under vacuum and sold in a box, very, very thin. And people were opening this envelope and the chair was coming up. Yeah. So that was quite uh, surprising. Technologically speaking, that was a, a big shock. The, the, the designer or the architect or whatever, they don't push, they don't know that they can push and amplify the field of culture. The masculine mind is monolithic, it's always the same, it's repetitive. Uh, but uh, the other feminine, the, the other part of the brain, the feminine one, is is ve very sensual. Is open to transparencies. Is uh, assuming different form in the different moment of the, the the day, thinking in a different way. So it's a very elastic. Our time is elastic. Is liquid yeah. better than elastic? So an example would be the building you made in Tokyo. For instance, the because the, the growing, uh, the greenery around, changing the building. But I believe to use elastic material is very actual because you can change with the machine. You push the building to be different in the morning. And then you push it in another way, it's, diff it's a different in the afternoon. So this is the dimension of architecture tomorrow. Your production method, which is uh, this unique repetition, uh, uh, the u d diversified series. Because that was the time when I started that kind of way to think. On the other side, my colleagues, like Sotsas and others, they were making the traditional series of objects. Like, you know. And uh, that too is strange. Why they didn't push? 
today limit what we were able to do at that time. The idea of production in series that is diversified is very strong because it's another political statement. We are different. We have the right to think in a different way, opposite to what the, the Marxism was telling to people. You have to think in the same way. But then the Marxism collapsed, uh, the, the communist regime collapsed. And today, we, we more or less, we know that we have to be different. Because uh, homogeneity is a characteristic of an, another historical moment. Yeah. We are in a non-homogeneous time. There's another uh, work of yours that you've been exhibiting this year, which just opened in New York, which is called Italy on the Cross. Yes. And I believe you first showed it in Milan during the Salone. That, for me, was the opportunity to express that the country of, of Italy, like Italy, cannot be in the banality that is finding itself now. Politicians are not so fantastic. You mean politically, socially? Politically, I think there is a crisis. There is an economical crisis, like everywhere in the world, but there is also uh, ideas uh, crisis. And they yet enter in a kind of mediocrity. And what is worst is that when someone, a political person, has a good idea, then another, just because he's uh, against him in another party, he says that the idea is bad. Mm. So there is always a fight. At the end, the energy goes for nothing. Mm. And so that is dedicated to this. There is no difference between right wing and left wing. Not anymore, ideologically speaking. Today, only money, only consume is important. And so, unfortunately, all the political class in Italy is nothing. And so they, that, that work is a little bit dedicated to this. Shoes. Yes. That you've just done with the Brazilian company, Melissa. So, were you looking at this for a long time? Nothing. The, the, me, I was always very interested in shoes. I don't know why. But when I was very young, I was interested in women's shoes. The shop at that time was a very elegant place where they were not showing the shoes like this. There was a model coming and showing the shoes. And me, I was saying, yes, that. Then I was shipping that to my mother. My mother had no money <laughs> to pay, <laughs> so the shoes were staying at the post office for maybe three, four months until we had the money to buy. So th that was my attachment to shoes. And so always I was, I don't know, with this interest. Also. When Melissa asked me that, I was happy to do it. And we did it very fast in a summer. Yeah. And the idea of that is, as you know, that people buy and then they express their own idea of elegance, mm. cutting the shoes in so the way. Cutting it way. out. Personalizing the shoes, making the shoes unique. That was the idea. And you're still doing a lot of furniture? It comes from a sunset in New York that I did for Casino a long time ago. It was a sofa talking about the decadence of this city. Because at that time, I had an idea that the city was not uh, so energetic like it was. Uh, this was in the 1980s? Yeah, 80, yes. And, um, but then it was not true because New York is still a very alive city compared to the other city in the world. But I, st I made the sofa. And the sofa is like a postcard, talking about figurative, it's an image, no, a sofa. It's not abstract, but it's an image with the sun. Mm. And then two years ago, when I started to work with Casina again, I made the Nocturno in New York. The same view, but instead to have the sun, ah. we have the moon. And it's more or less the same thing. Again, same idea. Again, a way to say uh, not abstraction. One of the things that you've made 
a lot of over the years that have been vases. Do you have a fascination with this object, the vase? I was uh, in Hong Kong. And I went with a friend in a China club, it's called. Very beautiful, by the way, in Hong Kong. To have dinner. And there I saw b fantastic vases in the entrance. Chinese vases. And I said to this friend, why the vase? Because the chi Chinese vase is very everywhere. In every family, mm. they have. And the, he said, no, the vase is very important in our tradition because it's the symbol of the mother. And so me, I, I, I was like that. And I understood that then I reconnect with my tradition. The Graal, in our tradition, mm. the Graal is the best container, is the, the God that stay there. You know? The Graal tradition where uh, warriors f uh, fight in the, in the mi Middle Ages to keep the Graal safe from I don't know who wants it to. So uh, I realized that the, my, my infatuation with the vase wa was something related to this ma magnificent thing that is mm. the conceiving a human being. And I went back and I saw that I made drawings like that. And you have one behind you. Mm. That one. Here. When did you do that? More oh, a long time ago. And so I also I didn't I never did vases rigid. I always made vases that really they look like stomach. Mm. So that is the I believe that is the reason. I suppose this is in a way kind of like a laboratory for you because you have all these experiments that are happening and you will adapt it and use material from one thing on another project. Oh, you do experience and so then you're really the like experience. a mad scientist. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but I remind you that in Renaissance time, we, the, the identity of an artist was not so clear. He was a little bit a scientist, a little bit a, a anatomist. He was, he was a kind of polyedric personality. And I believe that we lost a little bit today, today that we are so specialized. I don't know if it's still like that, but at that time it was like that. It was Arva. So do you find it helpful in your practice to be involved in different projects, like a shoe, like a building, very installation? Helpful. Very helpful. Because you become tired to do always the same thing. The repetition is tiring. And uh, when you repeat too much, you lose ideas. The discovery is very important.